Notebooks and Observable are reactive. And with Observable inputs, you can quickly create interface components such as buttons, sliders, text boxes, and so on that allow users to interact with data. For example, here's a histogram of the weights of Olympic athletes. The drop-down selector at the top lets me pick the sport that I'm interested in. Notice how the histogram shifts considerably between different kinds of sports, like weightlifting and gymnastics, for example. This drop-down selector is one of the built-in observable inputs. Inputs are part of the observable standard library that helps create notebooks by providing commonly used components. An input by itself simply creates the HTML and JavaScript code to display a component, like a slider. You can create inputs using the Add Cell menu that appears when you click a plus button on the left side of a cell. The top choices are the cell modes, JavaScript, Markdown, and HTML, and below that is a long list of useful elements that you can insert into your notebook. In addition to inputs, this also includes a variety of chart types, for example. You can either scroll down that list, or you can start typing to narrow down the options. At any time, you can select the highlighted item by pressing Enter or Return, or by clicking on it with your mouse. To use an input, we need to access the value that the user has selected. In JavaScript, you'd usually add an event listener so that you can run your code when the value changes. Observable handles this for you if you create a view of the input's value using the view of keyword. Now, the amount variable is a view of the input's value and changes whenever that value changes. Any cell that uses its value will also update. There are many different input types including a button, a checkbox or toggle, a group of checkboxes, a group of radio buttons, a date selector, and a simple text input box. And there are many more. Once you have created your inputs, you can add interactivity to charts built with observable plot. For example, the inputs here let me change this chart. I can change the letter that's being highlighted, the color of the bars, as well as the highlight color that shows the letter that I've selected. Let's take a brief look at how this works in the plot code. The fill definition might look intimidating at first, but it's really just a comparison. It's a function that takes a single input, called d here, and then compares that to the letter variable, which contains the letter that we've selected above. The question mark is called a ternary operator, or ternary if. It works like an if statement that returns one of two values. If the condition right before the question mark is true, it returns what comes right after it. In this case, that is the highlight variable, which contains the highlight color. If the condition is false, it returns what comes after the colon, which is the value of the color variable, and that contains the normal bar color for all the bars that aren't highlighted. We will cover this in a bit more depth in a later video, and we have documentation on our website as well. Next, let's dive into the way Observable uses JavaScript. 